everyone and welcome to Jack and Cat Adventures. Today we're going to be making baby back ribs and I wanted to show you how to get them started. And if you haven't checked out our um, face to, uh, Facebook and um, YouTube channel, um, check it out for my rib rub because that's what we're going to use today. So what you're going to start with is uh, a slab of ribs. Like I said, these are baby back. You can use any kind you want. And you're going to rinse them and dry them with paper towel. And then what you're going to do is, on this back side where the bone is, you want to take off this thin membrane because it does really make the ribs tough. Um, and I will show you how to do that. Just get a knife starting it, and hopefully this will work. Take a piece of paper towel and grab the membrane, and we're just going to keep pulling pieces off. There we go. See, once you get it started, it comes right off. There's your membrane. Like I said, using paper towel really helps, especially when they're thin. Sometimes you'll think there's no membrane on there, and there really is. Alright, so just, like I said, get up underneath it with your knife and grab an edge and just pull. There we go. It's not that hard. Let's grab this piece. I should take care of it all. There we go. And it's all off. That's it. So, get a pan and um, put heavy duty foil on a pan and make sure it's heavy duty and you want it wrapped tight. So, what you're going to do is you're going to put your rub, whatever kind you're using, you can just use salt, pepper, and garlic powder. That's fabulous because then we're going to bake them in the oven and then when they're done baking we're going to barbecue we're going to put barbecue sauce on them. So here's my rub. I'm just going to put a little bit all over the inside. Just rub it all over. Now you want to do these a day ahead of time because this rub needs to sit on them for 24 hours and soak in. And you don't need much of the rub for flavor. Just make sure you get all the sides and everything. All right, so now I'm going to put it on my foil, and I'm going to put it meat side up. And we'll wrap it like that. And then I'm just going to put more rub on here. This rub is delicious, you guys. I mean, just don't, you know, like cake it on you. I don't think you'd want it caked on, but just sprinkle a little bit on. Make sure you just get everything covered. And like I said, one of these um, recipes of the rub is enough for a lot of ribs. I'm just going to take a little bit, rub it all alongside here. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to wrap. So you're going to take, I put a piece of foil underneath and pulled it out far enough to wrap this over. So I'm going to wrap this over and pull it really tight against my ribs. And I'm going to pull this one back over. And I'm going to pull this tight. And just ball them up at the ends. So no steam gets out. You want no steam coming out of your ribs. And then you're going to place these in your refrigerator for 24 hours. And that's it. And after your um, 24 hours or overnight, um, take them out a half hour before you're going to put them in the oven to kind of get them up to a, a little bit of a room temperature so you're not putting cold meat into a hot oven. All right, now that um, these had set overnight in the refrigerator, I took them out 30 minutes before I'm going to put them in my oven. You want your oven to be preheated to 275, and you're going to cook them for two to three hours. At two hours, maybe open them a little bit and see if they're falling off the bone or however you like them. If you don't want them falling off the bone if you're going to put them out on the barbecue. So kind of keep that in mind. I'm doing mine all inside today. It's very hot outside, and I don't want to cook outside. So I'm going to put these in my preheated oven for two hours and then I'll check them and we'll see how they are. 
All right, so I took my ribs out of the oven. I had them in for two and a half hours. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them into pieces just so they're easier to turn on my rack. Now I'm gonna put them on another clean tray with non-stick foil this time. And you can do it without foil. I just do it for easy cleanup. And what I'm gonna do is, these are hot. Um, I'm gonna place them bone up because what we're gonna do is, we're going to put barbecue sauce on that, we're gonna put it in the broiler and let it get real sticky, and then we'll turn it over and really do the meat side. Now these, um, this particular rack of ribs, I only did salt and pepper on, but the next rack is what I used the rib rub on, and you can get that recipe in our video, Subjective Cat Adventures, and you'll find that there. Now, Jackie, come in and look at that. These ribs were very, very juicy. As you can see, this is why I'm switching over to another tray. This tray is really wet. And I just don't feel like playing around with it right now. Um, but now you'll see the ones that had the rub on them and you can see the difference in color. Now let me just cut this. These smell so good. And you can use any barbecue sauce you want. I'm using Jack Daniels number seven. That's what I always use. You don't have to cut them either. If you feel brave enough to turn them in the oven full rack, then go ahead and do that. All right, now this is my last piece, and then we'll put our barbecue sauce on. I'm just gonna stick this right in here so it... All right, now, I'm gonna put some barbecue sauce on. And I like a lot of barbecue sauce. I like it to be really sticky. I like them saucy. From in the oven, oh, I love it like that, okay. Now, as you can see, these at this stage, mine are not falling off the bone. I wanted to show you that you could do, do this if you only want to put them in for like two hours maybe and then finish them off on the grill if you like that barbecue flavor, then that's when you would put your barbecue sauce on and that way they're not so um, soft and falling apart. The, because sometimes if you leave it in the um, oven for a while, um, it will start to fall off the bone. The, the meat will become very, very tender. It's all up to you. How you guys like it? This smells so good, oh my goodness. Okay, they're sauced up now. I'm gonna stick them in a 500 degree oven. And that's broil for some of you guys. Um, and I'm going to set the timer for three minutes and I'm gonna check it. Don't walk away from this, it will burn quickly because of all the sugars in that barbecue sauce. Once we get the stickiness that we want, we'll pull them out, turn them over, and put sauce on the tops and put them back in for another three to five minutes. All right, so I'm just pulling them out on the first side that was cooking and I'm gonna flip them. This took about 12 minutes altogether, but make sure you set a timer or you know, remember that they're baking in the oven. And I can turn these over and the sauce really is not falling off of them. That means that it's nice and sticky. Like that, nice and sticky. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put more barbecue sauce on. Now what I might do, I haven't decided yet, is once these start to thicken up, on the other side now that I'm brushing, the meat side, I might brush them two times. So I might take this these out and brush them again, depending on how the sauce is looking in the oven. All right, so I sauced the other side, the meat side, and I'm gonna put them back in, and I'm going to keep watch on them to make sure they don't burn. 
And then, like I said, I will let you know if I did two or one on the barbecue sauce. I will let you know. All right, they're all done. As you can see, they're really brown and caramelly. That's how you want them. I did not do another um, thing of sauce on them. They don't need it. So please try this recipe, and if you do, let me know how you liked it. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and remember, you do you.